to. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, at this point, I'm going to we're going to I'm going to turn it over to Chairman uh, Chairman Terry Peterson to uh, welcome you all. Good evening. Thank you, Chairman. I'm Jeremy Fine, your Chief Financial Officer. And uh, good evening to the members of the board and the public. We're pleased to present the 2020 operating and 2020 through 2024 capital budgets. The proposed operating budget was released on October 24th. In accordance with our statutory requirements, a public hearing is being held tonight. The 2020 budget proposal is a balanced budget that totals $1.57 billion. It does not include a fair increase or service cuts. The state approved a new capital bill for the first time in 10 years. However, the state cuts continue to impact the operating budget. State budget cuts are estimated to be $30 million for 2020 due to 1.5% surcharge on the sales tax receipts, a 5% reduction to the public transportation funds known as PTF, and a 50% cut to the reduced fare reimbursement. 80% of the cuts to the PTF and the reduced fare reimbursements are borne by the CTA. The budget does assume PTF is restored for the state fiscal year 2021 budget, but does not assume that the reduced fare reimbursement is restored. That said, the CTA continues to find cost savings and additional non-fare box revenues. The 2020 budget includes cutting $25 million in labor costs by restricting hiring, locking in power costs at historically low prices, which provide budget certainty and savings, and strategic use of capital funds to reduce operating expenses by aligning capital funding sources with capital expenses. Since 2015, the CTA has realized $168 million in cost savings and additional non fare box revenues which equate to over 10% of our budget. The 20, uh, 24, 20 to 20 to 2024 capital program represents a $5.1 billion investment and continues the over $8 billion of capital investment program that was initiated in 2011. The 2020 capital budget proposal continues to modernize infrastructure, enhance safety and security, and improve the customer experience. The CTA has a diverse source of federal and local funds for its capital plan, and in 2019, the state came through with a new capital bill, which is key to supporting the $5.1 billion five-year capital program, an increase of over $2 billion over last year's plan. The state capital bill is the first one in 10 years and it will provide $1.2 billion in bond funds to the CTA over the next five years. In addition, it provides for a new recurring annual revenue stream, the first time the state has provided an annual PAYGO revenue for capital. The CTA is expected to receive $142 million per year from this new revenue source. The CTA will also provide $1 billion in bond funds to supplement the federal and state funding sources for projects. And previously, the RTA planned to issue bonds, but has removed that planned issuance of $144 million at this time due to the new state capital bill. Should the RTA issue bonds for the service boards after 2022, the CTA expects to receive 50%, which is, this, which is its historical allocation of those bond proceeds. 
Funds that would have otherwise gone to pay debt service will flow through to the service board's operating budgets if no bonds are issued. The 2020 to 2024 CIP provides funding to advance projects such as transformative projects such as the red purple modernization, your new blue, and the red line extension. It will also modernize our bus and rail fleets and provide funding for other state of good repair projects, including tracks, power, signals, and stations. This CIP provides significant additional funding for advancing key projects, including the red line extension and phase one of the all stations accessibility program. The, through the new capital bill, the CTA received a $60 million earmark for the Cottage Grove Green Line Station rehab that will provide a new community gateway. We also received an earmark for power and station improvements for the Blue Line O'Hare branch. $310 million is committed for design and preliminary engineering on the Red Line Extension Project, and these funds will augment the $75 million that were previously committed. $78 million will go towards the All Stations Accessibility Program, known as ASAP. This is the first dedicated funding for this program, which President Carter announced in 2018 as a top priority for his administration. This is a partial funding for the program, and the CTA continues to pursue a myriad of local, state, and federal sources for phase one. Portions of the following projects will be funded through this commitment, the Austin Green Line Station, the California Blue Line Station, the Montrose Blue Line Station, and rehabilitate, rehabilitating or replacing existing elevators throughout the system based on input from the community and the Mayor's Office of People with Disabilities. Rolling stock for bus and rail, including new electric buses and the new 7,000 series rail cars will also be funded through this capital program. Thank you for your attendance this evening and for the opportunity to present the 2020 operating budget and the 2020 through 2024 capital budget. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, we can now begin the public comment um, portion of tonight's evening and most of you have been here many times before. We're gonna start with the green cards because you're the ones who came in first and so that's why you're sitting in these front two rows. So anybody with green cards should probably be up here in the front couple of rows and we'll, we'll, we'll bring you on up. And Alan, since you contacted me first before anybody else, I want you to step right up to the mic. Thank you. And please try to limit yourselves to about three minutes or so. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I am Alan Mellis, a Lincoln Park community leader for 45 years, a public transportation advocate a former president of Friends of the Fulton Elevated and a former member of the Brown Line Task Force. First, after reading the New York Times articles about the terrible conditions of the New York City subway system, one can truly appreciate the fine job the CTA is doing. Thank you, Doral. Terry made me look at that Washington Post article. So. <coughs> <coughs> The CTA is to be commended for issu issuing its all station accessibility program. While the North and Clyburn and Belmont Blue Line stations were ranked high, they should have been made disabled accessible when the stations were upgraded. Potential funding sources must be identified in the ASAP implementation plan, and it's nice to see a dedicated funding source, so thank you. For example, developers who are taking advantage of the Transnoring Development Ordinance should be asked to contribute to the ASAP fund. Residential transit oriented development. Transit oriented development and zoning bonuses only work if there's sufficient capacity at the transit stations. For example, the many transit oriented development projects that are being built along Milwaukee Avenue have overwhelmed the boom line, especially during rush hours. Either TOD bonuses should be reduced along congested CTA routes, or developers again should be asked to contribute to a fund to increase capacity. Business transit oriented development. The CMAP on 2050 plan included the following. Increasing the number of jobs within a quarter of a mile of stations outside the central business district resulted in twice the transit mode share than making the same increase in households. The CTA should work with Chicago to determine if there should be transit development incentives for businesses located near transit. 
North Branch Lincoln Yards Improved Transit. As president of the organization Friends of Automobile Transportation in Lincoln Yards, I recognize the need for additional public transportation access to serve the 5,000 new homes, 23,000 jobs, and new retail stores in this first phase. Two top priority projects, and I included a map in my testimony, should be one, reinstating the Clyburn bus route, which would also serve the recently renovated Lathrop homes, and two, the establishment of a Sterling Bay funded 24-7 free CTA shuttle connecting the Lincoln Yards project with the CTA's Fullerton and Armitage stations. The time to plan for serving the $6 billion Lincoln Yards project is now. Let me repeat that. The time to plan for serving the $6 billion Lincoln Yards project is now. In conclusion, I have additional some minor items. You should install more train arrival time signs that can be seen from all parts of the platform. For example, at the uh, Washington, New Washington Station, if you get off the elevator, the sign is all the way down at the other end. On new subway cars, eliminate the map in the center of the train because it's difficult to read and replace with the same signs that are at the end of the cars. And three, on new cars, have the ability to display the next station when a train is rerouted due to an emergency. So I was on the red line and it was at Fullerton. I had to be rerouted, but it kept on saying you're at the Fullerton station. So they should have that capability. In closing, I would be remiss in not making another plea, that's a plea, to reinstate the number 11 Lincoln Avenue bus that is sorely missed by our communities. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Peterson. Heck, heck, I, I, I'll cut to the chase here. I, I have a gripe about the 5,000 being rehabbed at the midlife cycle um, because the seating configuration is clap. Excuse my French. Um, because it's like a lot of people say this, they don't like sitting sideways and there's only two, only two forward facing seats. <coughs> and I think you all did a fine job at Jefferson Park and thank you very much for that. And, um, let's see, um, and the the red purple modernization, what's going to be the case of Bowen? Are they going to shut that down or is it going to stay open? Thank you much. Good evening, Chairman Peterson, President Carver, and directors. I'm back after I had surgery on my right eye. It was a detached retina, and also, and also I have a torn retina on my re left eye. So I had surgery last month at Lutheran General Hospital Park Ridge. So I'm recuperating. It took me about three weeks to recuperate, so I'm back. And I would like to compliment Greg Lugini for sending me something for recuperating. It's so emotional for me. Glad to be back here at the budget public hearing for y'all, and since y'all really miss me. <laughs> and and also too, I just I I've been hearing this over and over and over again. People are still being on the tracks again. It still makes me angry that what are they thinking of in their mind? And I would like to know, once, once I get completely well, Dovo, is there any way that I could do a safety video showing them what this is really serious all about, why they're thinking about being on the tracks trying to get something and they don't have no knowledge or common sense of it because, or people are trying to go around of it. And just would like to know, like when can we, when can I do a safety video of it? Because it really makes me angry that they don't even get the message of it. And I would like to know how we can, 
set it up to make sure that they better think twice before going in there, even if they try to ignore it or try to say, yeah, right, this is not gonna, it won't affect me. So we need to not only communicate in other languages to make sure that they don't, that they better think twice and better look at themselves in the mirror saying, what are you gonna try to do? Be like a ticking time bomb or something, or what's more important, to live life longer or die faster? So what can we do something about that to make sure that, we, so our next people won't happen doing this again and again and again and again because it really makes me frustrated and say, Ugh, I just can't take it anymore. What? Don't, what's, what, what can we do about that? All right, because this is really, because they feel like they don't understand that those are killer tracks and, and it really irks me a lot because they just really don't have the knowledge of it. So. Just want y'all to know about that. Thank you, Carla. Um, Heather, would you like to speak next? I'll share. Sure. Okay. Share? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Here. Thank you. Hello. Um, my concern is, is what CTA is about the Carmel and Blue Line station. That station looks like it's all rusted, and it looks like it's very unsafe going to the to the buses especially because it looks like like when you get towards the buses it looks like it's all rusted and like the especially with the metal like in the framework it looks like it's very rusted plus it also looks like plus it's very inaccessible going there we need to make sure that that Cumberland station gets accessible, because like the elevator is always out there too. So we need to re remodel the Cumberland station, because currently I think that the pace buses should be over there, at Rosemont, Rosemont, because Rosemont is a nice station. So is it. Um, um, Harlem, those two are really, and even um, Jefferson Park are real nice stations. But the Carmelin station looks like it's going to fall apart because it's not safe. And other people tell me how unsafe it is. And another thing is, I'm going to bring up about what Garland said about people being on those tracks. It's like, I don't know why they're on those tracks when they know it's dangerous. Thank you. Yes, you should. Yeah, why don't you come up? Why don't you come out to the podium? That's a good idea. Or you can just take that one. And here's my card. Thank you. When I, I'll just direct myself towards the interpreter. Hello, my name is Donna K. Shaw. And I'm a member of the Access Living, uh, and I've learned a lot about this. And uh, I also have a problem with the Jeffrey, the Jeffrey bus. Um, they are constantly changing and rescheduling that Jeffrey bus, and there's a lot of things that are problematic with it. We don't know. I might stand on the bus stop for more than 15 or 20 minutes waiting for the bus. You know, and it's very, very frigidly cold outside, and I'm standing out there, and the bus driver, they know who I am, and I go to, you know, use my bus card, and they, they can't talk to me. You know, um, they need to write the name and the number somewhere in the bus uh, and a phone number that I can call, uh, you know, or so that they can tell me before I leave home, you know, because that's a safety issue. There's no lights out there. I'm standing there on the street. There's no lights or it's very, very dim lights early in the morning. Um, and so I wanted to ask that question of you. Uh, if it's possible for you guys, to, uh, you know, to get some help and maybe I can get a call from someone. Another thing I wanted to add um, is that uh, they may have a, no, a new change for the metro train station that's going to be near me uh, by Jeffrey. Um, and that train I do like, but then I have to walk up so many stairs just to get there, you know, and get directions on the way because it's so far out of the way. 
and then I have to sit, you know, and want to talk to the, someone in the, in the window. There's no agent there that I can ask questions if something is wrong. Uh, you know, and both of the setups are so uh, disjointed. Um, you know, it's like it's right over by 87th Street. Um, and we need to have some repairs done over there. And there's no elevator over there. There's not even an escalator. There's no way to, you know, make that trip up. Thank you for your time. She want to do that? Does she want to? Does she want to do that right now, or later? Hello. I can talk. Hello. Okay. Then you. Great, thank you. So Catherine's going with us? Yeah. Okay. Um, sir, you want to you go next? You want to come up? I can, I can get it. You want to go up there? Okay. Hello, I'm Ben Christie. I'm a disabled uh, uh, pre, pre, uh customer I have been noticing that as as the places are being uh, being upgraded the uh, the benches are disappearing now I understand this is probably be trying to get rid of the uh, people sleeping on the thing but as I mentioned earlier to one of the staff there is a type of bench that's actually just a little uh, just a little tiny stool uh, in fact it's usually uh, designed to look like a, a tooth a tooth stool a tooth stool um, yeah tooth yes <laughs> or, or, or mushroom and because it's completely round and only a little bit there, if a person tries to sleep, they're gonna fall off. <laughs> but those of us who need to sit, we can, we can uh, just spread our legs a little bit and there we are holding in our position. That helps a lot. I've heard three other people in the area today just mention how, how they, they they can't uh, they can't stand up all the time and that's the problem it's very hard to stay se seating standing and when the even if it's only only five or ten minutes it's still very bad on the bank so please find find money for some some mushrooms Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Melvin Thompson. I'm the executive director of the Andaleo Institute. Uh, Andaleo is the nonprofit community development arm of Trinity United Church of Christ at 400 West 95th Street in the Washington Heights, the beautiful Washington Heights uh, community. Uh, last week we had an annual meeting, and at our annual meeting, the theme of that meeting was a new station in life, literally and physically, a new physical 
95th Street Red Line station that we're extremely excited about. And so uh, I commend all of you on that because that's a game changer. Uh, we have a community that is stable and strong and we needed a catalyst like that. We spearheaded the, the renovation of the Woodson Library. So we have these two bookend capital improvements and now all my job is is to fill in the middle. So thank you all for helping me with that. I am equally excited about the $310 million that I see earmarked for the Red Line extension. We are in full support of that. Access to, to, to transit is a human right. What you're looking at in a budget is a moral document that every person should have the right to transit economic mobility, opportunity, and all the things that other people have taken for granted, even myself. And so we are in full support of that. Uh, one of the things that the community has asked me to make sure that people know is that once the complete renovation of the 95th st station is done, that it is not abandoned because we've seen uh, a lack of uh, cleanliness and safety, and there are still some issues. I heard some people talking about disability. Uh, our community has one of the highest populations of differently able people, and so it's still more than a notion crossing that street to get to and from that station. It's cool when you get in there and you can cross over the bridge and all those things, but access across those lights are still a major issue. So. Please consider all these things. Um, the Andaleo Institute was instrumental in pushing to get the eight parcels that the CTA now occupies with, with, with the construction team uh, to, to redevelop those once you all leave. We do not want to see just a, a parking lot because we're trying to become less of an auto-dependent community and more of a walkable community. We have a great Abbott Park across the street. We want to, my job is to revitalize the corridor. You've done a major thing in helping us spur development in and around that station. So the corridor development initiative that we're going to be doing with the Metropolitan Planning Council will be another catalyst. And so we want to be ground zero for the red line extension so that our corridor is emblematic of what can happen on 111th, 115th, and whatever the corridors are. So keep that in mind. You've got our support, but follow up because this is something that everybody's watching and we're going to hold you accountable to it. Okay? Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Matthew Mers. I'm a resident of Chicago. Uh, thanks to uh, Chairman Peterson, uh, President Carter, and the entire board for hosting this hearing tonight. I think it's a wonderful opportunity to stand in support of CTA and the proposed budget for 2020 and the 2020 through 2024 capital budget. Um, as was mentioned earlier, last October there was a great article in the New York Times with an even more wonderful headline where Chicago trounces New York fixing mass transit. And it's true. Uh, where other major systems in the U.S. have struggled, Chicago has modernized and rebuilt track and stations, invested in security, and gradually increased accessibility at key stations on the nation's second largest mass transit system. There's still work to do, but it's something we can all take pride in. CTA will become even more important over the next five and ten years with new developments like Lincoln Yards, bringing thousands of people daily to different parts of our city without high-frequency passenger rail infrastructure, along with explosive growth on the O'Hare branch of the Blue Line. Road expansion and rideshare won't be the permanent solution to this, and mass transit will continue to be the best and most environmentally friendly way to move millions across the city. In the proposed 2020 budget and the capital budget, it's easy to see how CTA outranks every major North American transit system in almost all facets of operation. CTA is incredibly responsible with taxpayers' money, and even with a lack of proper funding from the state, service has been maintained and investment has come to critical portions of our system. Additionally, this 2020 budget provides over $26 million in cost savings and operational efficiencies, all without fare increases or service reductions. This budget also addresses some critical projects and upgrades that will greatly improve strain parts of our system, including electrical power upgrades in the O'Hare branch of the Blue Line, a $60 million overhaul uh, to the Cottage Grove Green Line station, 
a $310 million investment into the Red Line Extension Project 130th and phase one of the RPM, which will be a, a dramatic effect uh, on the entire system. Uh, these are not small projects, and I support this budget and capital plan and can encourage all of Chicago to do so as well. Um, in the coming years, I would love to see CTA to explore or at least respond on the possibility of implementing universal fare capping through Ventra. Uh, Transport for London and TriMet in Portland, Oregon lead the world in offering this, which provides more equity to ridership. And it'd be a breakthrough for equality in the city, ensuring that all riders, regardless of income, have an equal opportunity to take advantage of CTA's best fares. Those who need the best value of transit often can't afford the cost of an unlimited ride pass up front, and introducing a daily, weekly, or even 30-day fare cap would ensure that all riders have the same opportunities. And in Chicago, that a city that has long struggled with equality and equity, this would be an important step in bridging the economic gaps for our residents. I continue to full heartedly support the implementation of bus priority zones on critical parts of our bus network, and I'm thrilled to see CTA's partnership with CDOT to identify and create a comprehensive citywide bus priority network plan. Chicago leads this country in mass transit reliability and modernization. Uh, we have work to do. But much of this work is reliant on the state and federal government's willingness to properly fund CTA. I'm happy to support this budget, and we can continue to make great strides to move our system and our city forward. Thank you. Hello, good evening. My name is Lucas Stevens. I'm a senior. Uh, my name is Lucas Stevens. I'm a senior research analyst at the Environmental Law and Policy Center, studying transportation and air quality in Chicago. Thank you for this opportunity to comment on CTA's proposed budget. I'm here to speak in support of CTA's purchase of electric buses included in its proposed bu budget. Replacing diesel-powered buses with electric engines reduces not only greenhouse gas emissions, but also harmful particulate matter uh, pollution, which is particularly dangerous for children and people with respiratory diseases. While the Chicago region's overall levels of particulate matter have been decreasing over the last decades, its occurrence is neither geographically nor temporally uniform and persists at dangerous levels when measured at local scales and over brief time periods. We understand that, that the electric buses are planned to be put into service on the Chicago Avenue Route 66. Through ELPC's air quality monitoring efforts over the past three summers, measuring particulate matter concentrations throughout the city with mobile handheld sensors, we have identified Chicago Avenue as the route with the fourth highest rate of harmful particulate matter readings. We therefore find CTA's current eBus implementation plan to be consistent with prioritizing air quality and environmental justice. As full elect electrification progresses on Route 66, we suggest CTA next consider incorporating e-buses on Routes 77, 152, and 47, where we have also found relatively high rates of harmful particulate matter concentrations. Prioritizing these areas to reduce diesel emissions would protect the health of residents and particularly burdened by air pollution. Furthermore, we fully endorse Mayor Lightfoot's campaign promise to electrify the entire CTA bus fleet by 2030 so that these diesel reduction benefits can extend to the entire city as soon as possible. And we eagerly await the results of a current study investigating how this can be accomplished and fit into CTA's long-term planning. We encourage CTA to explore the potential of a tariff financing approach in partnership with Chicago's electrical utility to support faster procurement of electric buses. Such an approach would leverage the lower fuel and maintenance costs of e-buses in comparison to conventional diesel buses to help finance the relatively high first-year costs of electric buses. In, Im in implementing electrification, we urge CTA to continue to prioritize environmental justice principles while maintaining the entire transit system so that it equitably and efficiently serves the transportation needs of Chicago's residents. And in that regard, we commend the lack of service cuts or fare increases in the proposed budget. Thank you.
Hello, um, CTA board members. My name is Quentin Berkeley. I'm from the west side of Chicago. I've been riding the Blue Line all my life. Born and raised in Chicago since 1977. I've been riding the Blue Line for years, from school to work. But the only problem is that whenever I go to work, it's just that the Blue Line always mess up my schedule. The thing is that not only for myself, but my fellow employees that works at the airport, coming from the south side, coming to O'Hare Airport, because we are air airport employees. We've been riding the Blue Line. I've been riding the Blue Line for years, and my fellow co-workers been riding the Blue Line for years, too. The only problem is that y'all been doing that construction on Fridays and Saturdays and stuff, and just that y'all messing up our, our schedule. We've been coming to work late, so on and so on, towards the weekends. So y'all kind of need to work out something on that construction because I work from three in the morning through, through I work three in the morning on Saturdays to 11.45. I'm off on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I've been riding the blue line ever since for years. And I understand y'all trying to fix the tracks and the trains and stuff, but my fellow coworkers have been complaining that whenever they ride the trains, it's been messiness, the bombs been sleeping on their left and right. We just getting tired and fed up with that left and right. We are air, airport employees, work for United. And I think it's time for us to get an airport discount for us airport employees, not for O'Hare, but only for Midway as well too. That's all I'm saying. Because I've been riding the blue line for years to going to work and going to other special events also too, because next week, or I mean next weekend, there's gonna be some major events coming up. Going to, coming from the Stevenson Convention Center to the Allstate Arena. And I need the Blue Line, I want a normal train system of the Blue Line to get to where we going and going to work and going to other places. That That's what I want for my fellow, fellow employees at United Airlines, O'Hare Airport, and for myself and for my brothers and all my family members because we've been riding the Blue Line for years, back in 1977, and it's time for a change. Y'all got y'all got this blue line. I just want this blue line fixed. I hope the project is fixed and good. Just get the bums off the blue line. And we need more cars on that blue line. The more I see those trains all rusted and stuff, I can't hardly get a seat because I see messiness and stuff and even even the trains are not clean properly when I get to the end of the line. I've been riding the blue line for years. I, my work schedule it's, it's five days a week. I'm only off on Tuesday and Wednesdays. The Blue Line has been all my life when I was a kid. And it's time for the Blue Line to be a complete overhaul, especially the trains and the stations also too. And I just want to know, is, is the mayor is, is going to do something about y'all, about this project and stuff? Is she in on it also too? That's my question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Claudia Levy. I live on the west side, and I work in Wicker, I believe it's Wicker Park in um, Bucktown area or Ukrainian Village. Um, I was going to say that uh, I like your, uh, I like the system that you, that you have right now, but I see the needs that they're need, with all due respect, I do, I see there needs to be more improvement. Like, um, I remember so many years ago, maybe 500 people were laid off. We need to hire those people back on again. And also when it comes to the call center, it closes at uh, seven during the week. I don't know about the weekends, but I think the weekends too, but at 7 p.m. Um, we need more people on the, on the, at the call centers. Um, before they got, before the 500 people lay off, uh, person lay off, um, it was, uh, uh, let me think, um, the call center were closed at 12 midnight instead of at 7. Um, some people maybe may get stranded. I mean, I know we got Uber and Lyft and, and uh, Via and all those, but some people can't afford that. Maybe one, but not, a, not on a weekly basis. And I admit that I used to use Uber and Lyft but then I decided to just cut back, and I appreciate the fact that the Ashton buses, 
uh, like the nine, the nine N buses, the nighttime 24 hour buses, or well, I know about Ashland, but the Western Avenue buses are 24 hours. North Avenue, I think that's 24 hours, and the 22 Dearborn Clark Clark uh, Dearborn Clark Avenue buses are 20 or 20, I believe 24 hours if I'm if I'm correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we need more. Like maybe we need to do what um, maybe what New York is doing, like be like a 24 hour, uh, be like a 24 hour town, um, because some people just have to work. Just like the, the gentleman before me, he has to work at 3:45 in the morning. I mean, we need we need buses. Then we just can't like have buses stop at two o'clock. And then start back up again around five. Uh, that's like that's like an Uber ride that adds up. I used to take Uber and I, I and and buses and it would be like uh, maybe one hundred seventy eight dollars, if not two hundred dollars a month. And that's that's like the price of a car, of of a that's the price of a car down payment or a condominium down uh, rent for one month. It, I, I'm cutting back. I admit that because I only rode maybe Uber or Lyft uh, once or twice this month. I lost count. I, I don't want to take up your time and look at my phone, but uh, I feel like the money just adds up because I, I work. I'm a cashier, so I don't. Uh, I'm. I, I mean, I make good money, but not a lot to like go put it all into Uber all the time. I mean, I gotta. I I gotta get new clothing. I mean, there's other things that I can spend my money on instead of Uber, Uber, Uber. So unfortunately, I, I, I did find the time, the, the uh, schedule through CTA bus tracker. Uh, I'm glad you have the bus tracker and the bus, and the, and the bus uh, tracker, tr train tracker uh, uh, apps or um, information. Um, and also when it comes to the trains, I haven't been on a train for like maybe, maybe a couple of years. I like the buses. According to the police, the buses are safer. Maybe that changed. Uh, maybe that changed because that was like maybe a year or two ago. Maybe that changed. Um, but uh, the bu on the on the trains, sometimes people smoke, and I don't want to have to inhale all that. And also, um, and this there needs to be more maybe office service officers. Or security guards with dogs to, to uh, to monitor um, monitor the train area. Uh, I know with the buses, if someone's smoking, the bus driver just kicks them right off the bus. So, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, but um, it, I just feel there needs to be more improvement. Like more, t there'll be more employment if, the, if we're a 24-hour city. More employment. Thank you. Hi there. Hi, my name is Teresa Anderson, and I live in the near north area. Um, I have noticed that there have been some bus stops that have been disappearing, and I wondered if that was some type of budget cut that had to occur recently. It's just been in the past few weeks. And I'm concerned that this might be because there's maintenance that's required, so that's one less bus stop to maintain if this might become a trend, which I am concerned about. So I don't know if this is the forum to bring this up, but I was concerned about all of this because I need those bus stops. The bus stop that closed recently was the one that is near my public storage. And I was going to carry heavy things and have the convenience of being able to go to my public storage. And fortunately, the bus driver said, you know it's closing tomorrow. And, and I was shocked because he said there's a sign up and the sign had been ripped off. So it was just about three inches of a sign left taped to a tree. And then, sure enough, the next day I went to my public storage and the, um, the bus stop shelter was gone. So um, I live in an area where there's a lot of seniors and these extra bus stops do help us. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Greg Bardick. I work at the Westside VA. I've been taking the CTA seven days a week for 10 years because the government pays for it and it's very convenient. I'm about 85% satisfied with it. I don't like coming to these meetings. I, I find them to be a joke and a trick and a waste of time, like at the VA. Uh, I'd like to see a show of hands. How many people on the board take the CTA every day? Thank you. Um, Writing the CTA on a daily basis is a bizarre situation, which is largely good, uh, but pretty much every day, every week, there's unbelievably bad things happening that everybody knows about. Uh, I took, uh, I saw a show on Friday, so I got on the Blue Line at 10 o'clock at the Oak Park Station on the Blue Line, and I got on the train and I was distracted by my own thoughts, and I was sad I got on the train because it was like a Turkish prison. It was a horrifying mess of just heroin addicts collapsed everywhere and wandering maniacs with shorts on, begging, and crazy people. So I, every stop, I would run to the next car, which would be filled with the same people, until I got to the loop. So it was a horrifying ride where I had no idea what my safety would be like because it was a cold snap. And every homeless person and mentally ill person who I take care of at the VA, who I have nothing against, was living on the train. And every car has a video camera on it that someone is ignoring for a good union salary. And I know that for a fact. It's a joke. And if you're on the, on the trains on a daily basis, if you're, if you're on during rush hour, chances are there's going to be a beggar or a maniac or a thief walking through the train bothering people, going car to car, that anybody watching any camera or any security guard could notice torturing people, where people are staring at the floor miserable every day. And if you come off hours, then it's a nightmare where you're terrified. And you might have to run to the conductor to stop the train to stop a crime all the time on the blue line, the red line. That's my experience. The bus stop by my house has a lady living in it 24 hours a day for two years. Two years where people, old people and children have to stand in the rain for two years because she lives in the bus stop at Armitage and Damon for two years. I take the Damon bus every morning in the morning. Five percent of the buses sound like a jet because there's some kind of exhaust problem where they're screaming. <laughs> about, I'd say about five percent of your bus drivers has a rage disorder, which I don't blame them for because there's a lot of problems. But if anybody was paying attention to the bus, they would notice that the guy is flooring it, slamming on the brakes and honking the horn and going berserk and screaming at people on the microphone for the whole ride, which is miserable. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. The bus tracker system is broken. Your agency admits it. The reason I'm here, the reason I'm here at this meeting, which I, I it's people complaining that you're nodding, not doing anything about, except sending them away, and people complimenting you on things you already agreed upon without us being involved in it. I came to this meeting because I went to the state of Illinois about the fact that you don't have a complaint system that works. And they gave me to Greg, who's been a wonderful person, who's helped me on a variety of things. But your complaint system is completely worthless. If you call, they put you on hold for 15 minutes when the situation is over. It's garbage. If you come down here, they're going to arrest you if you want to talk to somebody because no one will talk to you. If you guys rode the CTA, maybe you'd know about it. What are you doing? This is ridiculous. Wake up. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for allowing uh, the public an opportunity to speak with you. 
Uh, my apologies, normally I do bring a written document, but this was an impromptu presentation. Um, it's a big concern for me as a writer. Number one, your book opens up with a wonderful statement that says, we are committed to finding ways to better serve our customers. I think that's a great way to begin. You talk about comfort, you talk about the issues that deal with um, modernizing, approved state funding, um, the interior. Well, unfortunately, during the summer and sometimes during the winter, you have an issue with cleanliness and hygiene. You can't control, as someone just uh, spoke about, the fact that you have writers who have issues of that nature. You can't do that. There's no way you could. The funding that you have, you're trying to deal with just having the service itself. But unfortunately, a bed bug issue was very much a problem for me. I rode the bus and I kept getting bit. So now, if I can't put plastic on the seat, then I stand up and I ride the bus all day long for different reasons, to school, to the grocery store, wherever. And this is a problem. So, when you come to the table with a problem, you should have a solution. You have buses on some, and I have pictures, and I'll send what I spoke about today to Mr. Lugini in writing so that you may have a copy. You have plastic seats on some of your buses. Now, in reading your, over some of your areas, I noticed that you have a great deal of funding without getting into numbers for a new line. Perhaps a recommendation can be made under a contingency plan, even for the contracts you have now, that they need to remove all of those seats that have that fur or cover, rug, I don't know what they call it, it's not carpet, <laughs> but they do. They get in that and you can't, you, there's no way you could keep up with it, it's impossible. You have too much of a clientele that's coming from all walks of life. But those of us who have to survive and the quality of our life is important to us, I said it for four hours because it's important to me. I have to ride the bus in the CTA. So I'm hoping that as you um, review the contractual obligations, that you get maybe some wiggle room for looking at these buses and looking at the ales and removing. If you got people sleeping there, you really don't want to have that carpet there. Or well, I, I really don't know the correct term for whatever it is that covers those seats. But you do have some, and I have a picture on my phone, as I, I will print it out and email it. Uh, of the seats that may be with the new line. I don't know, I'm not that astute about that area. But you have some seats that have no covering of uh, carpet or rug or whatever it is. I'm sorry, upholstery. Um, and it does matter because I have to, like I said, if I don't bring a large plastic covering that I've created, then I have to stand up. Because that's all that you can do to meet my need and that's all I can do to meet my life standards. So I thank you very much and I hope that um, as you go forth, the terms that you use under strategic goals, clean, results oriented, you place a high priority on putting the customer at the center of every decision made. I hope that what I presented will be part of a decision you make. Thank you. Um, This is for the board. There's two sets of cards there. Uh, thank you, Charles. Good evening. Uh, my name is Charles Paydock, uh, Secretary of Citizens Taking Action for Transit Dependent Riders. I'll be eclectic uh, and try to cover briefly a number of issues. First of all, I'd like to compliment the editors who compiled the budget book of 219 pages. There's a, an enormous number of graphs and charts we haven't seen before, which were very informative and gave us a good assessment of public transit in the city here. Uh, there are omissions and defects, uh, one of which is uh, there's no information on specifically regarding bus schedules. And I'm talking about the infrastructure uh, uh, regarding later evening service. There is on ridership, certainly, uh, on, on page uh, 104. But uh, we're talking about where the buses go and when, or actually when they go and where do they go. At our website, we've tried to do our own studies to see what portions of the city are perhaps overserved and some other places underserved. This gentleman wants to have electric buses on the 152 route, for example, which doesn't run at any time after the rush hour and is of no value. I try to, I have difficulties with that route. So even though we have electric buses, it would not be running 
and of any advantage to the residents along that route. Uh, again, I'll okay, jump ahead here. Uh, unfortunately, the state is not coming forward. They're shorting CTA by 145 million. Uh, our organization is trying, it's an election year, and we're trying to interest, uh, make transit the issue among elected officials with a campaign of re-ride and we vote. Uh, my compliments to the 11,000 employees of CTA. I think they do a wonderful job. Uh, and the, it's evidenced by the performance figures, measurements on page 99. And I don't think they should be made of, I see there's increasingly retirement contribution burden placed upon them. And I don't, as a organized labor official, I'm not receptive to that change. Um, the new mobility competitors, ride sharing, taking away 48 million rides. The other thing is work at home. As I said, I'm familiar with that. That's an increasing uh, uh, deterrent to using public transit. They have how uh, hoteling and entire offices where no one has a permanent space. They use it on an on basis given, and they may come to work possibly for what they call face days. That's the new working arrangement. Um, let's see, the new resident program, tremendously creative. Uh, that's, that's exactly what we need to, to get the new residents to the city acclimated to using public transit and making them aware. Uh, the average fare uh, I see is $1.28. And I'm amazed that a lot of people in Chicago don't realize what a deal CTA can be. Uh, regarding the reduced fare subsidy, I see the state is again not coming forth with the full reimbursement. However, there is an absolute fiction, and I think it, I don't have the page reference, but it says that this caught seniors and disabled people are costing the CTA foregone revenue of a hundred million dollars. That's an absolute and total fiction. The figure is about 10 to $15 million, the cost of free senior care and rides for the disabled. And I guarantee you that's an absolute fact. So that's the one portion that I did find. Uh, now the last thing is ridership has been going down for the past couple of years, five years, 2012. The amazing thing is you look um, though on uh, page 127, Ride, the number of revenue miles of buses has increased over that same period. The number of um, uh, the um, um, trains, the same thing. The number of revenue miles has increased. So we're increasing service, but less people are using it. Um, it's began, and I, I go to our website. I didn't make a printed thing for you, but it's posted there. We went back to 2012 informally, and look what happened. And that was the when he began with this overcrowding remedy, supposedly. Now, why I would recommend is if that's when the decline started, then go back and let's look again and undo, undo that. It was obviously a mistake and costly to the transit system overall. That's the only thing I could recommend. Um, lastly, I would like to say there's a new thing in here called sustainable transportation. And we've got an environmental guy here. I've been an, a member of the Chicago Green since, since inception, I won't say how many years ago. There's encouraging interest in public transportation regarding this climate change and so forth, especially among the young people. I think this, this thing that it's on the back of the book, page 185 to 90, is probably the best thing that's in there. And I think this is sellable to the young people who are concerned about, genuinely concerned about climate change. I'd like to work with CTA, and, and I'm affiliated with the other environmental organizations in the city, including you guys. Uh, I maintain contacts. And we'd like to work with you in, in fostering this thing. Certainly, the fleet of electric buses is the direction that we all want to go. And I applaud CTA in that regard. Thank you very much, Greg.
Hi, hi my name is Jacob Berenson. Um, I'd like to applaud you guys for committing to not increase fares and not cut service um, despite the losses in revenue. Um, unfortunately, as we've heard before, ridership has continued to decline over the past few years. Um, what we need to do, in my opinion, is we need to we need to intensify the usage of the CTA. We need to intensify the usage around areas that are very auto-centric. Um, I know right now, anecdotally, Pink Line only runs four car trains in rush hour. We can double the capacity on that. We need to look at how we can bring more people into the system because we need to make it attractive to everyone, including people that have just moved here, might not be familiar with it. Um, I'd also like to applaud the initiative with the um, TOD for the bus rapid transit or the bus routes. Um, I'm a daily 49 bus rider, fantastic route. Um, I think it would help us out a lot if we had some sort of commitment to keeping a standard level of service, maybe like 10 minutes during the day, 24 hour service as much as possible on these bus routes. Um, Again, that's only something that can be more easily justified if we have more people on the system. Um, just a few other minor points. Um, also, Damon Rider, I think there should be a stop at Damon and 29th to serve the FedEx facility. Um, I've seen a few people use the Damon bus to get to that facility, but the nearest stop is, I believe, two blocks away at 2610 South Damon. Um, Finally, one other thing, this may be for further down the line, but in my opinion, we should have 24-hour service on both of the train lines to both airports. We have that right now on the blue line, but we do not on the orange line. I understand we do have the Archer night bus, but um, I think it would greatly benefit people coming into Midway on flights that might be delayed um, if they had the option to take the orange line at like two in the morning or three in the morning. Um, so again, to recap, um, we need to intensify usage of the CTA. We need to add ridership. That's how we're going to continue and grow and stay strong in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sean Rossini, good evening. Uh, I'd like to commend you again on holding the line on fares and service cuts even while uh, revenue falls from ridership declines and capital funds from the state and federal government, of course, continues to be ever more, um, how should I put it, unreliable. So you guys do have a thankless job and I'd like to thank you for that. You and everyone in CTA's workforce is able to crunch the numbers to make this magic happen. Now, of course, this magic might be possible because we're in a very long economic expansion now and the sales tax subsidy, uh, I would assume, is providing some of the ability to offset any sort of budget cuts uh, within the system while maintaining uh, those service levels. But we do have to look at how we are going to increase revenue into the system when economic conditions change. At the tail end of this economic cycle, recession is highly likely to take effect pretty soon. Uh, so some of concepts I would be interested to know if CTA has looked at, or if you're hearing it for the first time, I'd be happy to uh, share some of these ideas. But um, something that Asian cities do all the time is they lease the land above their real estate assets. So transit stations, bus terminals often will have development on top of them. And I know CTA has done this with the bus turnaround at Northwestern Memorial Hospital where there's a parking garage above it. But I would love to see CTA engage in a citywide comprehensive program that could be coupled with the Chicago Department of Planning uh, and the city council to look at your CTA real estate assets and look at what is possible for real estate development on top of them. Not only would this drive additional revenue into the system by way of increasing ridership by putting a lot of riders where the system exists, but also 
these uh, developments that could occur on your properties could be developed using a ground lease, which is paying continuously every year into the CTA system. And it can offset some of your uh, expense burdens, such as a lack of capital funding when budget and our state and federal budgets are tight, as they continue to be. And this is something that's pretty common elsewhere in the world, but it's not all that common in the US, but um, there are real world case studies out there. Uh, additionally, as we saw on Monday, the orange and brown lines uh, were running currently as one line. This is something that happens every rush hour. Not too many people know that this happens, but it seems to offer some uh, system efficiencies. And I was curious to know if CTA has actually looked at if any budgetary efficiencies could occur by just merging those lines and running them that way all the time. This would open up airport access to the north side, to Midway, and it would reduce congestion at Tower 18 by reducing the number of movements of trains through that interchange, potentially decongesting the loop and allowing us to actually increase capacity on both the orange and brown lines. And if there are operational efficiencies that come out of that from a cost savings, that would be an additional benefit. So I don't know if that's actually been studied, making that a permanent uh, solution down the road, but it's something that uh, could be out there. Uh, also, the 63rd and Cottage Grove station, which is budgeted for reconstruction, I'm very much happy to see that. There's been a lot of private investment in that corner of Woodlawn, and I think cleaning up that corner would really help further that along. There have been some conceptual plans in turning that into a one-track terminal station. I would implore you to please keep it a two-track terminal station that could eventually facilitate a line reconstruction back to Jackson Park, where we could serve the Obama Presidential Center and the additional development that's coming down the line in Woodlawn as those vacant lots are filling in. So just some uh, concepts out there. So thank you very much. One problem that we have, I know most of you know this, but for over 20 years, buses have not run all night like they should be. Number 54, number 72 North Avenue, number 85 Central, number 70 Division Bus, number 12 Roosevelt. Buses that go to the blue line, red line, and probably to the green line do not run all night. I can understand how you can have a billion dollar Belmont crossover and talking about expanding the red line, but you don't have access to the loop or the blue line stations at all. Number 20 Madison bus cannot haul at all. People cannot keep walking. That's too far to walk. From Madison, you don't have a bus that runs all night east or west until you get to Belmont, and after that to Lawrence. Too many streets. This is unacceptable. <laughs> People need jobs. That Jefferson Park station need to have at least four buses running all night. Not just 81 Lawrence bus. You need to have Cicero bus. It used to, back in the day, we had the X-54 bus. It used to go to Jefferson Park to Midway. And they tried several times. We need that bus running all night, 24 hours, to Jefferson Park to Midway to give you access to the blue line and the orange line on both ends, Jefferson Park and Midway, and the blue line at the Eisenhower and Jefferson Park. That could be another route just like Western. When people rode that X-54 bus, it was like another Western. I used to come from work. UPS, I was able to get to the cable company to pay my bill before 6 o'clock. That bus stayed busy. That is, Cicero is a major route. I can't understand why you can't run all night to go there. North Avenue bus, number 72, that's another route. You can't get on the blue line. You can't get on the red line. North and Clybourne. You can't go to Damon, North Avenue, Milwaukee. Number 70 division bus. I can understand back in the day when they had the shootings in the projects when they're up there, they stopped it. But that's also Division Ashton, Milwaukee. You know, and also go down to um, Clark and Division. That needs to run all night. Number 12, Roosevelt bus. That goes downtown to the Green Line train. And a few years ago, State Representative Sean Ford was trying to get a proposal going to um, reopen that central stop at Central and Harrison that's been closed since the 70s. That would be a good, excellent 
you know, choice to have the number 12 Roosevelt and 85 Central bus serving that all night long. But for the time being, can you at least have the 85 Central bus running all night to the Cicero Blue Line station and then run all night to go up to Jefferson Park to the Blue Line station? Right? We cannot accept being shut down in the neighborhood on lockdown at night for over 20 years. Yeah. Am I right? Exactly. Why is it in 20 years you have not done anything? It doesn't make any sense. We, we, yeah, 66 Chicago bus, I'm in on there too, not going to Austin yeah. at a certain time. That is a major route. Yeah. You, why would you just go, to, don't go to Austin, just go to Pulaski? You used to have the number 20 Madison bus going to Harmon Lake and not even the Green Line stop, but they cut that. You know, it doesn't make any sense. People going to shopping one time during the Christmas holiday and found out that the bus stopped at 2 in the morning. You didn't they even go by the way. I was fortunate they were able to get a ride to come back way doing Christmas shopping. But you need to have the 66 bus doing the same thing. If the Green Line's not going to run all night, at least have the buses run all night. Sure. Take that 66 bus. Also, Ford's Fire Station. Every bus terminal that's major in the city should have buses running all night long. What buses do you have running all night to Ford's Park? You should have the Roosevelt. If you don't have Roosevelt, number 72 North Avenue Division, you need buses coming out of there all night long. And going all the way past Harlem and Lake, you need all those buses running. But like I said, that Cicero bus is a major operation that can go from Midway to Jefferson Park 24 hours. There's no absolute, no excuse where you can't get a bus to go to the airport. The airport's a priority. That's where the jobs are. For people that need to go work, that's where the jobs are. And if you want this neighborhood to pick up, you got to pick up the bus. If the city that's working, it's not working all night. Working means work all night, too. So it's not the city that work. Why are you continuously trying to keep this Austin neighborhood shut down? I don't understand that. Crime is everywhere. You can't get any buses to run all night long. The red line train, like I said, sometimes you have go to appointments or something like that, stop appointments. The number 22 clock bus, just like you said, the bomb bus. It's just another red line. Laying across the seats all night long, like Richard Price said, the old morning pee. They get on there smelling running people off the bus. Pepper the Pew wouldn't even sit next to them. And that's the king of the pew. Yeah, I know no, I was when I'm getting deep, it's always time to wrap up. See, we, we need these buses running all night. Stop putting four line cars on the pink line train when it's an eight car platform. The number no, the um, green line train, the station at Cicero and Lake. Why is it that you send a six car train on the eight car platform? and you have like almost 200 feet of space to go up to, you have to run and nearly bust your knees out trying to get to the train. Well, you need a six car mark there too. It used to be eight cars, then after rush hour, six cars, and then down to four cars. You go to eight to four cars. And sometimes the trains will say uh, six to eight minutes, five o'clock, 5.30 in the evening, why are they all of a sudden going down to 10 minutes and rush hour's not over yet? I'm looking at the tracker sign, they're being slick. Bus, the central bus used to run every 15 minutes between 8 and 10 o'clock in the evening during the week. Why is it at 8 o'clock, bam, down to 20 minutes? People can't go to the stores. Does anybody else have a card? Well, I'm going to then read in one person who sent me a statement. He wants me to read into the record. A uh, statement of David Dalka, 1006 Roscoe Street. The RPM project is a community failure. The RPM community team is understaffed given the volume of, requ of requests created by poor planning by an incompetent leader. Worse, it is not staffed with the right people, skills, and mindset. This is a problem solving customer service task, not a PR role. New and different resources are needed to meet community needs. Current staff does not respond to crises timely, professionally, return phone calls, does not keep the word, is not available 24 7, 365, and has spread misinformation both about the project and smeared the reputations of people in the community instead of fixing the problems. 311 is currently unable to rectify problems after hours. The promised 24-hour hotline for RPM area residents needs to be installed immediately. Since RPM started one, I had my internet knocked out for days at a time and it was un unstable for a year until recently being fixed. Diesel trucks not in alignment with the agreement of rules of the recent green building at Cook County Hospital need to be implemented. Current trucks and other vehicles are not compliant. This much changed quickly 
or residences will need finances to remedy non-standard events, such as new flame-proof and soundproof windows. Emails and phone calls are not returned timely when they are returned. Acceptable creation solutions are not created or lies are given. Information is hidden. Recent RPM work started with zero community input and communication. A meeting of residents did not occur in my building. In fact, my building had no notices put on it at all. The email list did not send me the details that my alley would be closed to traffic. When asked about it, the RPM responded that this does not affect my building. A total lie. I have been harassed by CTA security and other personnel due to the false information provided by the CTA and the 44th Ward Alderman's office staff, both amongst each other and with others. This needs correction. Wash floor on August 1st, 2019, a meeting was held and David Shear and Sven promised to meet with me before work started on my block. They built positive trust. It was destroyed by the RPM team, disrespecting them. Ultimately, several people on the RPM team need to be dismissed from their roles due to actions that are not in alignment with ethics of the institution and for actively working to destroy relationships between CTA vendors and the community. Loose plates and ordinances required to prevent it. CTA service. CTA service has never been worse than now. Trains and buses are poorly spaced and creates delays in people's travels, impairs economic activity and results overcrowding that has proven to be dangerous. Trains and buses are filled with panhandlers, people blasting music, drug dealers, and people that smoke cigarettes. J. Jewel, pot and other smoking variants, especially on the south side, it is now impossible to enter a northbound red line train at Lake that does not smell like a Metro smoking car in the 1980s. This is unacceptable, morally inhuman, and an actual violation of numerous health protection laws. I would like to see the smoking fine ordinance to 1,000 to fund the CTA enforcement mechanism to make this end. This agency needs to become focused outward on passenger success, safety, and low community impacts, which are the proper KPI to measure the success of a transit agency. Number two, bus. I would like to see this service expanded to all day instead of rush hour, or the number two bus, I assume. I would like to see this service expanded to all day instead of rush hours only as I find myself in the loop needing to go to and from Hyde Park often. It is an awesome bus route. The Belmont L Station North entrance is an eyesore of pigeon droppings, poor design, and already falling apart despite the recent buildup. The Brown Line, between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., service needs to be eight cars at all times. Otherwise, why did the CTA waste 500 million? In conclusion, the Red Line train spacing needs improvement. I've waited 15 minutes or more far too often lately. Um, are there any other cars here? Was this, this is a six All right, that this now this now concludes the, the uh, public hearing. Thank you.